You can be as rich as a pig, but you can't get better coke. <laughs> the working man or working woman, the poorest of our society, is drinking the same coke like, uh, like Buffett. Mm -hmm. Unlike wine, where you can actually go spend ridiculous amounts of money for an, 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 an old bottle, mm -hmm. or even perhaps beer, um, there is no uh, social stratification, if you will, in coke. So, so far, Slavoj Žižek. Now, I am adding to this, well, in a way, a little bit also in a digital world. You can be Steve Jobs, but you can't really have a better iPhone than, than, than almost everybody can afford. So, your gateway is extremely cheap. You can, you can I mean, they're already giving iPhones. If you buy, you know, two kilos of potatoes, you get a, get a cell phone for free. Um, so, 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 in a way, if I take this imagination about real virtuality all the way, you can live in a mud hole, and you put on your glasses, and you want your building to be made of gold, diamonds, silver, click on the bottom. So the traditional values that we still have in the real world will absolutely disappear. Money, gold, well, you, can, you can have a palace with 300 or 5,000 rooms, why not? It's just you can a beautifully program. combine the idea of the gateway and the trust issue we we had before, or well, yeah. the trust topic, to put it that way. Um, I don't know if you have trust issues, but uh, trust as a topic. Um, if you structure the the human history in the way the 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 system theory um, thinkers did, um, you will end up with the assumption once again, the assumption that. Uh, the way we communicate the uh, technologies we have to communicate structure our organizations and our institutions. So uh, as long as we only have been able to speak villages where the, the societies we build, because in the village you can still um, have the, by using the gateway of, of speaking, um, you can share your imagination about the same things. Once we started to write on paper, uh, you could come up with a city because you have a way of using the new communication to build up more trust and share imaginations. Once we had Gutenberg, we've been able to um, print out and at the same day have the same information in different parts of the nation, which is why we came up with a nation state. And now we're at the uh, cutting edge of what in that theory is called the next society, the digital-based Society. Now, if you take the gateway idea, what you see is that um, you, it's it from every step to the other. It it was more easy uh, for more people to participate earlier. So you can think of it. Yes, there is a digital divide. Yes, um, if you read Piketty, it's shocking. But um, there is also at the same time a trend of democratization uh, of the access to information because. Um, it was much more difficult to get a specific book if it's only if it only existed in twice copies uh, at I don't know Kloster Bad Wimpfen and I wanted to read it in Hamburg than it is um, mm. today. Mm. Yeah. So the gateways are getting easier accessible for more people. In a second, you put something on Twitter or <clears throat> or whatever a, a Chinese peasant can read it. It's 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 a complete. Uh, divorce from the real. And if you, if you look at that from a psychological perspective, Jeremy Rifkin is doing that a lot. Now you can discuss if Jeremy Rifkin is cool or not, but his idea of global empathy, mm -hmm. pointing out that we first felt empathy with our fellows who we could talk right. to, we then felt empathy with our own nation state, but right now when Haiti happened uh, via Twitter, um, people started to um, spend money uh, in, in philanthropical causes minutes after that. Why is that cool for cryptocurrencies? Because with cryptocurrencies, you're not paying the transaction costs, which enables more and more people. There's a, uh, somewhere here is Jens, the chairman of the Dogecoin Foundation. Dogecoin is somewhat the um, social alternative. That's how the Zeit called it to Bitcoin, right? Different storyteller. It's more about uh, social aspects than, than the, the investment aspects of Bitcoin. Now, via Dogecoin, 30,000 euros have been raised. One of them was the most expensive tweet ever tweeted. Um, I think 11,000 euros some, or dollars something in one tweet. That 30,000 were 
the sum of micro, micro, micro philanthropical investments that wouldn't make any sense if you would have paid Western Union fees on that. Mm. But it summed up to $30,000. And that's $30,000 combining the ideas of maybe 30,000 people w which were able to help, which wouldn't be able uh, by using the usual fiat money we have. Mm. But we're, we're talking about two different phenomena. And on one hand, I think it's important to uh, point out that you are already realizing your utopia through baby steps, through Dogecoin, and say enabling others to their civil engagement and giving them tools to participate in this. At the same time, it all depends on media and media, say, reach. When you say Twitter, it means it needs to be also picked up by mainstream media. We have television, we have newspapers, we still have all these old media reaching out parallelly, and this is how we manage to create that sort of attention to then be able to collect the yeah, money. But they need us more than we need them. Sure. So there's, a simp there's a simple anecdote to that. A few days ago, I think that ZDF had um, a great uh, show. I was at the hotel and I had time like in the middle of the night to, to watch that. It wasn't that great, but it was like one of the pilot programs they had to tr in which they were trying to u make use of the second screen. Mm -hmm. Now the second screen, right, is what goes on the nerves of everybody who's making television because you're not only watching Tatort, but you're twittering about it and that's happening outside your own community management as as a television uh, maker. Now in this case, you've been invited as someone who watched that show to go online on a specifically on uploaded website um, and you could only understood the story of that, that movie if you've been online and you've done at parallel uh, little riddles. Um, if you wouldn't have done that, the, the movie wouldn't have made any sense. So they are reaching out so to that's us. Why. And it's, it's not we are reaching out to them. Yeah, it might have also been the middle of the night, a uh, long night. Yeah. Right, so, so there's still the divide between great ideas and actually getting it to the people. Yeah. So you've so seen it. I suspect no one else has seen it in this room. I don't know, anyone? Because everybody so, was asleep, so, I assume. So this is about... Saturday evening. The thing is, what does media do? Coming back to your um, escapism, which it also... It's a little bit of a description of Holodeck, which what, what you were saying, the gateway... To some extent, so it's escapism. Media has the role of escapism. So why, if I have the tools to create a world, would I still? how do I get still the media? How do I get to be involved with the society? And where does this society exist? Because you create your elf society, I create an orc society, and he creates a different society. Yeah. So in that world, we all don't exist together anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said that's a lonely world. Mm. Uh, you can, of course, you know, invite visitors but there will be in, in reality you can't invite visitors to reality I can invite you for coffee or for beer but I can't really invite you for reality because we own it together but if I create my own world it will be a lonely world where I can define you if you're there or not you know it's like a little bit from Matrix the scene with the train man mm -hmm. in the second part where he says you know to Neo who tries to fight him he said you don't understand this is my world. In this world, I am God, because I, I create the matrix of, of, of that. Of that. So, so Matrix was a prophetic film. I was stupid enough. I didn't understand that Matrix was a prophetic film about the future of mankind. <laughs> the only thing is that we will enter that world voluntarily. And there we are many and, economies. And, 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 and you know, people go, no, and you know, but OK, how many of you do not have a, ha, have a smartphone? You're already in the world. You know, if there is anybody who actually does not have a smartphone or who does not have a phone, uh, that's her own world on itself. So, but it's it's a, this is also some. This is also a world that somebody created exactly. for me. This yeah. this room was created by a brilliant uh, architect for me. We are in an absolutely unnatural position right now because we are what now thirty meters above ground. We are floating in air. Only there's a floor, of course, mm -hmm. but. Uh, we, we have no business to do here. We were supposed to be 30 meters lower. And this whole hotel and the roads and the, and the microphone and the cell phone and you and what we think has been manufactured, labored and paid for by other people. It is, if you've been born in a city, those of you who have been born in a city have never ever in your life seen anything natural. Look around you, all you see is artificial things made by human beings 
for human beings artificially. Even the tree that you can, well, not here, but even a tree in the city is there because some bureaucrat thought it's going to be nice if that tree's there. Which has lovely... Yeah, nothing to do with natural, you know... Which has lovely policy implications because you can um, uh, make great analysis on how the way the city you've been born in, you're, you've moved to, is structured and your idea and your concept and your philosophy of nature, for example. While we think of nature as something that um, we want to keep, we want to have it, we want to protect um, and because it's something that in the last 200 years was only known for us as a place where you go once or twice a year to relax yeah. or something beautiful. None of us has been attacked by a wolf uh, in his lifetime, probably. If you go to Japan, you see in their theological uh, fundaments the ghosts of nature as being aggressive and danger uh, to, 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 to humanity and you have to stop them because they are known to the, the nature they have known is uh, water, wind, all the things, uh, tsunamis that have been dangerous. I'm not, that's again something you, you can think of as being good or evil, um, but it's, it's a bias um, you have. My next question would be, you know, um, but I think it's a kind of a redundant question because uh, um, uh, when you say that, that economies or our reality is already very virtual since, since century, decades, uh, so where are we then in hundreds, in 100 years from now? Uh, Is there another level of yeah, virtuality? Yeah. I, I really think that the virtuality will, will, will now we are, let's say, 80% in virtuality. Let's measure in, in economics, you know. In economics, this is, this is something that I don't know. What, we, what will, because business and money is based on the idea of scarcity. If things are scarce, you can blah, blah, blah. Now, if things are not scarce, if you copy paste and you can make a, not one room, but thousand rooms or million rooms or, or then what will we be trading? And I don't know, as I said, but I think we'll be trading fantasies. Artists will become the rich, uh, the rich upper class in this world because they will be the, if you've seen a Lego movie, mm -hmm. they will be the, the makers, mm -hmm. the masters, the crafters. So people, not artists today is different. I like I like your way of, of now you can be a musician without the the trouble of actually learning how to control your fingers over the keyboard. It's about three D printing. Now you can be a musician without ever studying music. In the future, in the very near future, you can be an artist without even having to hold any you know history of art or or, or having to hold some technique. So art will <coughs> emancipate itself very quickly from techniques such as le just like led by your idea with music emancipating yourself from the piano or from the guitar or from bass and all that ridiculous stinky real thing and um and 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 we will be i think my guess is we'll be trading emotions we'll be trading fantasies fantasy and emotion is also quite closely related and, and one of those emotions you would be able to trade would of course be the total antithesis of this because then there is a great market of people offering classical piano uh, in a totally offline setting and you'll be able to to have that as well but then it's a choice it's not the only way of being able to enjoy art and it's, and it's interesting how, how how magnetic this world is of course you can in theory switch off your cell phones for a day or two or for a week, but you don't. You simply do not. The world has, this, this digital world has a gravity of its own. And I would even go further, I've never said this loud, so I'm not sure I offer this to your critical examination as everything that I say, of course. But I even think that the digital world has, you sort of want to touch it. You have a touch phone, you want to touch it. Even you know there is nothing new happening, you just open it and you touch it. It sort of wants your attention in the same way that a pet, a dog or a cat or a partner wants your attention. This digital world is not neutral, it's not without gravity of its own. So we will, and just to finish my point on if you live in, if you've been born in a city, you've never seen anything real, there is no escape from this. You think, okay, I will buy a two-month visit to Tibet and I will leave my cell phone here. No, 
you're still only doing a two month visit <laughs> to Tibet with your credit card loaded with German euros on your disposal. You cannot leave the world of artificial uh, this. And, and another one final point, this is the difference between nature and civilization. We've been doing this ever since we learned this is the whole idea of civilization is to detach ourselves from nature. This is where Gilgamesh starts. He builds a wall around the city for the nature not to intrude into my artificial world. Which, by the way, those of you who enjoy horror movies, this is exactly the leitmotif of horror movies, is that nature reverses, reverses exactly the, the food chain. Yeah? So, stupid horror, which I love very much, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The idea there is what we have been doing or what we are doing to the nature we go like goblins, we go into ground and we extract stone that we torture under heavy temperatures and we create iron mm -hmm. out of that and out of that iron we create a chainsaw and we use that chainsaw to cut down living trees. <laughs> and then we, we, we further torture the trees, we cut them into small little lanes and then we dry them and we turn them and twist them and then you have um, a floor. So there is extreme levels of violence around you which is extremely silent. But this room has been made by, by, by tons of violence that we have performed against silent. This was the fear, if you actually read the very old texts, when, the old, when our fathers were plowing the field, they felt extremely bad about this because what you do is you take a piece of iron, you thrust it into the ground and you tear it by plowing. You take the inside and, 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 you, and you plow it. And this is why they had the rituals to excuse to nature. Now the leitmotif of all these movies is that the chainsaw, sorry, the, the, the food chain reverses and nature does exactly what we, d we do to nature. We come to a tree and we cut it off. Uh, a representation of this nature, which is usually something between a human being and an animal, zombie, vampire, werewolf, um, uh, witch, who always lives in the forest, or a small child, or a madman. This is a, this is a very, very typical motif of, of horror movies today, is a madman, a mad person, like in Seven, or a person who is devoid of civilizational rationality. He, is, he has no it lid. <laughs> and again, so there is a great, there's great empirical evidence uh, on what kind of cultural phenomenon comes uh, at what point in economical uh, uh, cyclus. Um, we know that zombie movies comes, come at, at a different time in economic development than, uh, for example, vampire movies. Because a vampire is an old aristocratic person. Just there's a new empire, vampire movie out right now. I haven't seen it. I've heard different things. But uh, in zombie, zombie movies, you don't see zombie movies anymore. You've seen World War Z, but you have seen The Walking Dead. But that all started a few years ago. Even the movie, the, the book was written years before the movie came out. So you could predict that it's now, we're now back in a vampire time because people are looking for leadership. And that's what the vampire gives. Zombies don't have leadership. They are very, if you want to put it that way, that it's, it's a sum of uh, uh, creatures with a very rational uh, choice uh, 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 momentum. Yeah. The nice thing about uh, zombies is that every adult <laughs> has a basic dilemma. Do I reproduce or do I feed? This is the dilemma at the end of the day that you're solving every second in your, in your head. Zombies, and this is why they are so efficient, they reproduce by eating. Yeah. <laughs> now, wonderful. Let me at this point, and I think um, you've given the audience lots to think about from maniacs to uh, the global empathic a new society, um, <laughs> new tools, um, and um, so I'm, I'm very curious to hear if, if you have questions. Uh, the floor is open. Um, please uh, raise your hand. We have a microphone here. We'll be happy to give it to anyone who's got a question. Any one at this point? Um, if you were to design a new currency, a new type of money, a new monetary system, what would be the three main attributes of that? 
So the three. How, how crazy do you want me to go on a scale from <laughs> zero to ten? Well, I've heard you for a while, so um, go to ten. Okay. <laughs> so this is a, this is, and I have been giving the credit to come up with something completely crazy and un. Okay. If I were to establish a new, and this is a cr stupid, crazy. Go ahead. <laughs> ten. I would, and you're gonna laugh. I would establish the currency on smiles, laughter. Mm -hmm. Just imagine that la and, you know, pfft, laughter would be the currency. Suddenly, Africa would get a lot of investment because it's very easy to make the poor African children smile. A lot of people would invest a lot of money there. It's very difficult to make our children in, in Western Europe smile. Because they already have an iPod, you can give them a sec. I don't know what you know. Chocolate, fuck you. You know, you want some more meat? Nah. You want this? Nah. You want an iPod? Nah. It's difficult to make a rich person happier. In fact, if you, if. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't hear. Can you hand over the microphone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was this was this was the, this was a nice debate I had I had. Two, 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 two weeks ago, no, absolutely. Two weeks ago, I said, you know, the average income in Czech Republic is, you know, this and that. And the person said, yeah, 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 but some people have much less. I said, yeah, that's the characteristic of an average. <laughs> so absolutely, yeah. Or in India and anywhere. But, but that's where, that's, it would be a completely different, it would be a completely different um, so, so world. No, it, it would be it, the, the money print would not be centralized or, or, or even even in, in cryptocurrency, it's centralized somewhere with. with, well, with we, we but you would have it. You would have money print in the person himself by these smiles. We, 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 we value is created by smiling. Value would be created by value. Let me take that as an example. Use that as a, as a vehicle to explain why few of us believe that cryptocurrencies are a huge step in that, because we did came up with a currency based on, on laughter. It's not human laughter, but it's based on a laughing Shiba Inu, which is a stupid picture of a very cute, sorry Jens, wherever you are, um, it is a stupid uh, picture of a very cute Shiba Inu, a Japanese dog. Uh, but he's smiling quite cute. And the, the basic idea behind this currency was that someone in Australia said, now that these stupid Bitcoins are around, uh, <laughs> which is a bad idea for, for whatever reasons, uh, we, we could even make the stupid laughing dog a currency. And that's not how you trade the internet. That's not how you treat the internet. Because the internet was going like, yeah, well, challenge accepted, let's do that. Um, in the end, what... Um, Cryptocurrency, to, to, let me explain that by, by an example why I believe that the idea of decentralization is something that is inher in, in, inherent to the next step um, of currency. Um, if you take um, everybody in this room and you would like to um, give me money, then the way this works, if you have cash and you give it to me, is quite simple and we're done. Um, but most people, just as Tomas pointed out earlier, don't use cash. Um, and there are different reasons not to use cash. There are even a lot of governments and regulators who don't want you to use cash. For example, the 500 euro um, uh, banknote. It's mainly used for criminal activities. Like how many of you are running around with a 500 euro banknote? Right, but a lot of people who are going, to, yeah, somebody's bring, bring it up, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but it is uh, th th those those banknotes have a 99.999 uh, 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 of of them have co cocaine uh, in, in on 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 them, and they are mainly used for drugs and 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 illegal uh, um, uh, illegal uh, uh, activity. So. Um, so cash would be great to use because it's without an intermediary. It is, of course, based in a political institutional system. You have to trust that system. But digital currency is not. Now, in a cryptocurrency world, we have something that is called the blockchain. As I said, it's an ancient idea. But now we've been able to, to reproduce that idea in a digital context. What would happen is that you write on a paper uh, or whatever you say it loud that that's only the the instrument right that you would like to give me parts of your money but you're not only telling me you're telling everybody around now everybody has 
a copy of the book in which uh, uh, is written, and that might be an old ancient idea as well, a book in which the, the history of everybody is written, what amount of money you have, what amount of money and I have, and if the, that book checks that you have enough money to, to give me the amount you, you uh, told them um, you're going to give to me, then everybody is updating his book. Now, at some point, th there are many transactions going on similarly. You want to give me money, I want to give Thomas money, everybody wants to, to do some kind of transactions and buying and selling um, parallel, right? Now the question is how you make sure that this, these books are all on the same page. Now this goes by the algorithms and the, that's where the, the, the beauty and the magic of, of the, the mathematicians come come in. If you have detailed question to that, there are great minds in a room that can answer those questions much better than I do. But imagine this room of people who are doing transaction and talking to each other and at some point um, someone is uh, calling an uh, Heureka because he or she has solved a mathematical problem that was given out um, before. Now this person is the one whose transaction book is the legitimate one and everybody is getting a copy of that and a new mathematical problem is put out. So you have a decentralized way of making sure that everybody has the same transaction moves and we build that upon a smiling Shiba Inu. Um, in, in a small way, the, the smiling currency, which I, again, I repeat, this is, this is a crazy idea, but you actually use this currency already today with your friends, with your family, yes. with your, yeah. we sort of trade, um, not smiles, but emotions. You want to make your girlfriend and your friends smile or, or happy. You can do that with, with a depressing movie. So, so, so smiling isn't a hundred percent good proxy for that. But, uh, but this is what I meant. Yeah. It's sort of a currency in an intimate setting. But for that, you need the same default um, emotional space, so well, to speak. You base your currency on, you get more. That's known. You get what, sorry? You get more on whatever you base your currency on. Right, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Perfect. Like perfect. 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 Absolutely. Smile, absolutely. Yeah. Well, at some point, um, where yeah. your money is, there your heart also will be. This, I think, is somewhere from the New Testament. No. Well, <laughs> at, at some point, we'll have achieved all mathematical um, questions that have been built in this specific cryptocurrency. At Bitcoin, that's twenty-one point. That's twenty-one million Bitcoin, and then that's it. There is not going to be a single more Bitcoin. Let, let's, let's imagine March next year. Ethereum actually um, make it happen and, and we can build cryptocurrencies as we like. How would you build yours based on Ethereum? <laughs> um, we should explain Ethereum before answering Shortly. the question. Shortly? Are you going to? Well, well Ethereum basically is, is a... It's like the next it's big it's thing. A framework, it's a framework that enables everybody to build um, cryptocurrencies or whatever other things you like um, based on blockchains. So um, based blockchains meaning trustless transactions between parties. Okay. Um, now the beauty about this is, before I answer the question, that what we will see is what we see already, that um, different schools of thoughts will have different cryptocurrencies. Um, while Bitcoin, for example, has a deflation momentum because there is a cap at some point that's not going to be more uh, 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 Bitcoin. That's also where, where it gets uh, uh, very beautiful from a political philosophy standpoint because you have people on the very left side of the spectrum who, who, that, who loves, uh, which love Bitcoin specifically because of that deflation because if you own a Bitcoin and it's worth x euros today and you know it's going to be worth x plus 10 euros next week you're not going to spend it on something stupid um, and you have people in the very very libertarian uh, 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 let's say right wing of the of the uh, spectrum who love it because they at, at the moment don't have to pay taxes there's a, a guy in, in Berlin Kreuzberg who I don't know how he keeps on running his bar he? he's not here unfortunately but we can visit his bar I guess right is he? I think he's here. Really? Obviously What's not. his name? Maybe. We don't name. 
He left. He left. Okay. So well, he's a great. Yeah. Damn it. But uh, I don't know how he keeps still keeps running his bar because he's publicly pointing out that uh, he likes Bitcoin also because he's not uh, he is not forced to pay taxes. But that aside. So um, I think I would build a cryptocurrency um, based on my personal view of what money should be. And that's something going back to the complexity issue in the very beginning, me having no idea what's good and what's evil that I haven't figured out yet. I have a lot of ideas of how money shouldn't look like, um, but I haven't come up with a concept that I truly believe is, is the best thing. Thank you, good enough. Thank you for a great question. If you have an idea, join us and tell us. <laughs> Hi, I'm Martin. I'm an investor and a clown. I think it's a nice combination. Nice. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, some points actually. What I think it's a very important <laughs> conversation and I think the topic is very, very important and I see not enough people already talking about this. Not, not only in public but also in politics. Um, totally. What is money? And as you said, even you know, people, economists, they don't know really what it is. And I would like to give a definition by myself yeah, 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 or absolutely, something absolutely. what I read, and not only symbol, what you mentioned. Uh, I think money is our god. Yeah. And yeah. Slavoj Žižek quoted uh, Jacques Lacan, and Lacan said, mm. "God is unconscious, mm -hmm. so we are not even aware of that He is our god." Yeah, that's money perfect. Is our god. So you know, to to quote Žižek. <laughs> Money was invented, you know, by we have a god, we do something bad, we have to give a sacrifice to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You even so you even call it budget money, cuts. Exactly. Cut. So money yeah. is connected very strongly to sacrifices. Yeah. We only believe in our god of money yeah. because there are sacrifices. Yeah. 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 There are people starving in this world. We have this hero crisis. The people were not treated right. There were re huge problems in Greek. But all these sacrifices. <laughs> has to be done, they must happen. Otherwise, there would yeah. be not something like money. We have to yeah. believe in it, yeah. there must be sacrifices. So I think also a digital currency will not solve the problem that money needs sacrifices. Nice. Mm -hmm. And I think also that the digital currency just shows the next priests. And these are the data scientists, yeah. the mm -hmm. informatics. And yeah. they understand, even if you look at banks, they are run by the quants and the mm -hmm. informatics yeah. already. They are yeah. not bankers anymore. Mm -hmm. It's all yeah. about mathematics, yeah. higher mathematics. Mm -hmm. And this is the new religion we talk about. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. This religion brings now the digital money, but the belief system and the sacrifices the same. the same. My question is, what kind of new sacrifices will we see for this? Now, there are two I questions to this, but perfect. before I answer those, uh, before I give those answers, um, I don't know if you might be frustrated or happy, but I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Um, you can also read that not only at, uh, with him, but um, uh, at David Greber as well, who's yeah, pointing yeah, yeah. very much out the idea of interests being a sacrifice you give um, for being In allowed fact, money to live longer. Probably was created during sacrificial rituals. No. Um, so um, to take it from there, um, the, you're totally right. The cryptocurrencies are not going to solve any of the inherent problems of economical systems. Um, if you believe that an interest-run monetary system is not a good idea, there are technical ways to come up with the cryptocurrencies that uh, that does not have that principle. But the technolo the the technique is not going to solve that problem for you. Um, it's simply a more um, a democratic, more open, more maybe more trustworthy way of framing then you have the frame again, um, right. different theories of, of how you believe economics should be structured. Um, so you have a mainframe. But, 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 but just to carry on from your excellent uh, Lacanian point, this is, a, 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 because one of my roles is to translate these beautiful ideas into something that everybody can understand. This is a great example how unconscious the, the society is. You are earning money all your life. It's I, you know, I, I understand money as a form of energy. You've been, you can save that in the bank, but you don't know what's happening with your own money. You all have money in the bank, and you are completely unconscious. We live in an unconscious society. 
you don't know even i don't know because i don't care even though i should with with what money is and and one other lacanian point to to bring here this to me is the nature of the crises it was a collapse of the subject supposed to know we have come from childhood where we believe that there is a class of lawyers and economists and politicians who have been representing the subject supposed to know and there was a philosophical fuck the money thing there was a philosophical collapse of a subject supposed to know. So we as a society have learned that the father figure represented by the serious banker who gives you money or not, who is, you know, ed- today fathers no longer play the role of a father, market plays the role of a father. So father, and again, I'm maybe a little bit extreme here, but father is another version of a mother. You know, father plays with the kids and gives them wise advice to, you know, <laughs> father is no longer tough. And I'm not advocating for tough fathership. I'm also a very meek father. But all in the history, it was the father who was the, no, the no-nonsense sort of a guy. Now we don't have this anymore. Fathers are another version of a mother. The real proper father is the market. Because that will teach you. We don't go to, the, you know, when I was younger, my father said, you know, the only good thing about army, because we had to go to the army, no longer, thank God, is that it will teach you the real no, we don't have this anymore, thank God. The real is taught to us by business, by, by employment, blah, 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 blah. So there was a, this is why I think there was so much huge disillusionment. We as mankind have grown into puberty from childhood, blindly trusting too much the father figure and anything that the father figure says, the priesthood of or whatever, you can interpret this any way you want to spin it. We have realized that the father is an impotent, ignorant um, um, yeah, that has become my most favorite word. But, um, you know, I don't really know how to put that. But, but we have castrated, or we have seen, perhaps even more brutally put, we have seen the castration of our own father. If, in, if you look into the history of, of religion all the way till today, economics being the most ecumenical religion of the globe, everybody agrees. In the beginning, yeah, you can have your own culture, your own food, your own gods, but there is only one economy. I mean, it's, it, it is absolutely the most ecumenical religion that we've ever had on this planet. But if you very, again, fast forward through the history of, um, of, of sacrifices, in the old times, gods uh, or divinity or the system, whatever you want to call it, wanted a sacrifice of production. So, you know, in economics, everything is supply and demand. So, you know, the firstborn, blah, blah, blah. Now, gods no longer require a sacrifice of supply. They require a sacrifice of demand. This is what the small twist that Jesus did in the New Testament. It's continuing much further even that. He doesn't want you to sacrifice your, your foreskin, which is, you know, you read the Old Testament, you think there's no sex involved. But, you know, these people were actually asked to cut a part of their dick off as a religious symbol of belonging to a chosen nation. So that is no longer required. You don't have to cut a cup of your dick, a part of your dick off, but you have to cut your desires. Today, we no longer sacrifice the firstborn, da, da, da. We sacrifice desires. And if that is prolong the trend, then that would make perfect sense in this digital ideal world no longer sacrifices of supply but sacrifices of of demand well i think we sacrifice more other people nature um fresh air this is all yeah yeah, yeah. but in this virtual world you know um the less it is connected to you as the person who did something wrong the better it is yeah it must be really a virgin you know it's something which is very vulnerable that's the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. But even better sacrifices are your desires and the most virgin desires, the most natural desires, such as yeah. sex and, and, and violence. That's exactly what you have to sacrifice in today's society because you are supposed to be tolerant and, and hygienic. You're not allowed to touch. It's going to be, uh, I just came back from Dubai where we had this World Economic Forum, and I fear in a way that is going to be the sterile society is what will be left in the world of a real. 
sterile. I don't comment on anything that's important. Um, uh, you know, even the toilets smell of, of elderberry today. This is the problem. It's still already a problem to take pictures of your naked son or daughter right yeah. now. Yeah, or yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's take the next question. Go ahead. Thanks very much. Uh, Georgi, um, I have a question uh, according to two worlds uh, where we create value. We are creating value in a, a world of market exchange yeah. and in a world of non-market exchange Perfect. at the same time. Right. And I'm very interested to uh, understand to hear if you have a vision how these two worlds would come together. Because the first world of market exchange is based on the old maze of production. Yeah. And we have new maze of production today based on communication and collaboration. Right. And, and no, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. How uh, do you have an vision how these two worlds? So, this is a third good question in a row. This has never happened to me in my life. You know. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I really thoroughly thank you. Do you want to start? I don't have um, the answer. W one idea that comes to my mind is um, the discussion on sharing economy, which in the first st the first concepts uh, in, in that discourse have been evolved by people f from the creative industries, uh, um, and the idea was that you don't you, you we can move away from ownership which is what have been traded at the first marketplace but we can move to access um and and, and sharing now the problem is uh at least with, with that uh, idea and it might be with other answers to your question based on that distinction as well that um that sounds great on paper but the 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 um we don't know how to transform our society from nowadays uh ba based on ownership to a society based on on access because right now um you can participate in the beautiful berlin hipster share economy if you own something that you can share if not it's very difficult it gets easy again if desires and fantasies and art are things you can share as well but right now, I would say sharing economy was the answer. I'm not sure if that's a good one, though. David Graeber has this. The, I had this debate. With, there's a book. We wrote a book, small book together with David Graeber, exactly touching on, on this topic. And, you know, anthropologists have been criticizing economists for a long time that there is a fantasy in the economic w world that, you know, there was this um, uh, exchange. Uh, barter, sorry, barter economy, and that was very clumsy. So then people invented money, mm. and and David Graeber says bullshit. This there is no evidence that there ever was barter economy. More likely, it's very difficult to find these stripes. Sometimes we manage, but more likely it was a sh um, it was um, yeah. yeah, it was like it was like. Uh, it's very difficult to describe. So when we had this, it was it was a sharing sort of economy. Where and, I, and, and when I met him, I said, you know, David, I, I, I read your book with great interest. I found it extremely fascinating. Uh, I don't agree with his political conclusions, but, you know, those are irrelevant. Uh, but I said, you know, I found your society that you anthropologists are look, trying to, to look for where money isn't the, th that people trade and exchange, but they don't use money to do that. And that uh, you don't have to travel very far to find that society. That's today that's a family in your family or with your friends you trade ideas like we do right now you trade thoughts smiles and even beers or whatever or with a family you actually fund the whole small person for 18 years you actually give him or her money and they give you what back paintings of you know really bad paintings <laughs> that's an exchange no that that is an exchange but it's not quit quit it's not exact so, uh, so there is this, what you describe is already actually happening. And it may be, I would even say 80% of, 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 of our lives, we trade things and we can do that in somehow intuitively without, without money. The problem is when you come to the edge of the intercourse. So this was another great economist, Dan Ariely, who showed that um, if you, if you, um, how should I put it? If you pay, if you, if, 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 if you take an element from a human, 
There is a great German philosopher, Martin Buber. I don't know if you know him. He's very popular in Czech Republic. Is Martin Buber, no, nobody knows Ma Martin. Ich und Dao, how do you say it? Dao, anyway. He also has these worlds, two worlds. And um, so that would be, if, you, if you're interested in this question, get Martin Buber's I and Thou, I think it's called in, in, in English. Um, Dan Ariely says, problem arrives when you actually m mess, mess the two areas. So for example, I have a girl, she spends the night with me, we have a great time, and in the morning I leave 200 euros banknote on her, on her side of a bed. And if you, if you follow David, that which is like a beautiful thing to do, um, it is also, or to bring back Tomas, and it's also when the mathematicians, sorry Jutta, when the mathematicians uh, uh, were the people who um, tried to define social relations, yeah. that's when the first market is happening. Because as long as you want my scarf and you ask me for it and we have the social rule, of me, if you ask me for something, I'll give it to you. And I like your shoes, and you give me your shoes. Um, and we don't measure. At no point we can say that we're done. There's no need for more social interaction. That's one of the ideas that if economists don't tell us the history of ideas, but anthropologists would tell it to us, uh, maybe that's how society was, was born in the first place. Because you had a bunch of people that owe each other stuff, and no one knew how much I owe you and the other way around. But then this, it's in my best interest to make sure that you're doing well because I want you to be able to pay your debt at some point. This is, to me, a definition of friendship is friends are people who forget how much they own each other. <laughs> okay. I have a lot of friends there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I would like to push this a little further and follow up on the other question. So um, given that my second generation cryptocurrency might um, enable us like, to not only implement any kind of purposeful currency, but kind of general social agreement, social contract. I would love to um, hear your perspective on how this global kind of sharing and bartering economy would look like, because that is kind of different from, from, what, might, uh, from what might have existed like previously in history. Well, that's a, another good question. When there is a disaster in Bali, we are basically sending emotions. Only we represent those emotions with money, in, in, in the better case. So that's how, I would, uh, that's how I would answer. And But we know that money isn't a very, very, very it's, it's an okay proxy. We've managed to come with money, which we've been using for 6,000 years. It's quite far, actually. It's, it's for as imperfect, and, and mystical element as money is, we've actually managed to get really quite far. But now everybody understands that there is something missing, maybe 20% or 30% about money. It, it's okay. It's, it's, we have love and hate relationship to, to money. We love it and hate it. You, it's the same thing we have towards consumption. We love to consume, but at the same time, we hate it. Uh, and and, and uh, you know, uh, we're talking Zizek, he has this great example how today you can even um, uh, marketize the emotion of feeling guilty. So you go to Starbucks, you buy coffee, you feel guilty for your purchase, but you can already also buy a guilt-free coffee because 1.1% of that coffee goes to remedy what that coffee production destroyed in its path. But you already, within the consuming uh, um, um, uh, ritual, you already get an excuse that you can also purchase commercially. It's so much better than that by now. You can go to Starbucks and order a coffee. Not only do you get that 1%, but you, it, you can buy, uh, you can leave the, the, the twice the price and uh, someone who cannot afford the coffee uh, can come in and say, is there... Uh, a free coffee on the list so we even managed to have like several layers of uh, sacrifice if you want so um, which makes us feel guilt-free again so in other words the task at hand is to actually answer your question I would say the task at hand is to mold money into way so they can encompass better our emotion because 
if if money would be perfect, Einstein would be a millionaire. He never was. But of course, everybody would say, yeah, Einstein should really deserve all the respect and credit that should also be represented monetarily. But today, a lot of strange people become rich. And they, that does not correspond with our emotions. Bankers is a great example. They, you know. So I think what, in one way, the task is, is to mold the money so that they better represent our emotions. And let me bring in cryptocurrencies to, to, to give that a format of how this could look like. Um, a lot of those investment bankers who maybe shouldn't be rich uh, are also rich by Bitcoin standards because they just bought themselves in. If you take Dogecoin, that is a currency which is uh, I'm not only biased by, but it's very much it's very close correlated with Reddit. Reddit is one of the most growing and most socially active online communities now. Do what, what Dogecoin has been used for, for the, from the very beginning was uh, some kind of thank you alternative to clicktivism where you only click like if you like something and idea uh, drawing whatever was uploaded on, on, on Reddit. But this was combined with thank you, that's beautiful, that's a great joke, a great idea, whatever. You answered my question of uh, I give you a like and I send you 1.000.1 Dogecoin. Um, that's that's like it's built on the same technique but it's a inherently a different uh vision and again to, to stress that point that thirty thousand euros that that have been raised for uh, uh, a water charity in kenya um couldn't have been raised with any other technology because that was money from from simple people who if they only can afford to give you 10 cents because they like the idea, they, they only click on like by now. In that Dogecoin model, they will be able to click on like and to send 0001 Dogecoin. That's still summed up to 30,000 euros. So you, you're really coming very close to sending emotions. This is a perfect example. I was even thinking about car driving that maybe in the future we won't need policemen. You'll just be doing likes and dislikes to other drivers. So some driver lets you, lets you go you you know you give him a like and then there will be this big thing above the car that he's you know has 3000 likes or another driver has you know 3000 dislikes and if you have 5000 dislikes you lose your driving license so you know something like that reputation basically yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 so yeah. we need to learn to feel the right way and then the money the yeah. right people yeah. are the rich yeah. people yeah. once we again technically you see that uh, with uh, websites for example there are there are concepts uh, which use cryptocurrency, but not as a currency in a classical sense. The same, the the, the, the fundamental technology to build as and to build an internet that works the following way: a website that is viewed by many people will be um, much more accessible because if you uh, type in the URL, you will be much sooner. You, you will see much sooner the content because the system. Uh, gives computing power to those who have reputation. So if you have a cool website, a cool story to tell if you want to, more people will come and it will be, you will be, um, yeah, uh, you, you'll get an achievement for your cool story. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it's a great moment to, to come to an end since we have heard a lot of stories, as you said. There's many insights to be shared. Um, I would encourage you to... Um, Look up our website, D-Day Network, and if you there will you find an, an email. If you have further questions um, that will arise in the next two days, send them. I will try to get them answered, and we'll try to have a, a blog post. And we discussed this earlier with Manu. I think this is an an event with lots of new ideas that are worthy to be discussed later on and, and uh, posted in, in, in blog posts. So yeah. I know this has been quite a ride, as I said before, and I think. Um, all of you will have questions in the next couple of days. Uh, you're welcome to send them in later, ddaynetwork.com. And I think we can thank you on. for having thank you. Thank you for this amazing conversation. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this, this debate very, very much. And I really <laughs> wanted to thank here. you for making this amazing. <laughs> thank you very much.